Welcome back, brothers and sisters. I am Braden. This is Langley Outdoors Academy, and thank you for stopping by. All right, guys, what we're going to talk about tonight is an article out of The Guardian, but they're hitting something that they can't understand. And of course, we are here to enlighten them. They are hitting on the idea that Asian Americans are buying guns like never before. If they had been watching this channel for the past six to eight months, they would have known that. But it seems they're just now stumbling upon this fact, and they cannot figure it out. Well, some of the interviews in this article express perfectly the Second Amendment ideal, the ideal that Americans all have the right for the Second Amendment, no matter of your color, creed, or race. It doesn't matter. You have a Second Amendment right. And that's what we're going to dive into because even the people interviewed in this article are alluding to that same thing. They're not using the same phrases, but they're saying the same thing. And that is what we're going to break down because this is gold, people. Everything will be linked in the description box below. I cannot wait to hear what you guys think. I'm going to do a quick read from our sponsor for this week's videos, LAS Concealment. And then we are going to hit it. I'm going to walk you through the Guardian's confusion because, like I said, it's gold. Now, if you're in the market for a holster for your, freedom, your favorite freedom tool, then you need to check out LAS Concealment. With LAS Concealment, you get a custom piece of equipment molded specifically for your personal choice of freedom. Made from Kydex and designed to keep you comfortable and safe in your day-to-day -day activities, with designs inside and outside the waistband and multiple design options, they've got anything that you could be looking for. Check them out in the description box below, and thank you so much to LAS Concealment for making the videos this week possible. But, let's hit it. I cannot wait to hear you guys' comments on this one. Asian Americans are buying guns in record numbers. What's caused this surge? Again, this is why we cover the things we do on this channel, so we can put out video and content like this and be ahead of the curve, because when the mainstream media catches up, we have already know where everything is, and that is crucial, because information is everything in this fight for our rights. More than 5 million people became first-time owners during the pandemic as gun sales to the community rose by about 43% by Claire Wang in Los Angeles. Vivian Moon, a real estate agent and artist, had never felt particularly afraid as a woman living alone in Buena Park, a small California city outside Los Angeles. But when violent attacks against Asian women and seniors increased across the U.S. early last year, she became disillusioned with the police's ability and willingness to protect people who looked like her. I can't speak to the last part of that, but what I can speak to is two things that she just hit on. One, the comfort level and the safety level went away. It dissipated. She didn't feel comfortable anymore. So what did she do? She reached for the Second Amendment, something that is a birthright. This is incredibly important because even in communities that traditionally do not have firearms or as part of their cultural fabric, we're talking about an adoption that they've never seen before and the left doesn't know what to do. That's why this is all about gun controllers freaking out because it's the Second Amendment and the freedom tied together with it are penetrating their propaganda. Let's put it nicely. But let's keep going. So, like many other Americans of Asian descent, she decided to buy a gun. Quote, I realized I have to take ownership of how I want to live my life, said Moon 33. Yeah, baby! That's the whole point. If you are a new gun owner, if you are new to the gun industry, if you are thinking about getting a gun, if you stumbled across these videos... The whole point is, we have a blessing of a Second Amendment in this nation to be able to defend ourselves, both from, uh, from uh, enemies foreign and domestic, but also in our homes, also from criminals. We have the ability to do so. It's in our Constitution and our Bill of Rights. Take note, just if you're new, who's trying to take that from you? Who's trying to curtail that right from you? Because it starts with a D, it doesn't start with an R. Let's keep going, because there is history and precedent, and we are going to hit it. In the years since... Moon said she's made an effort to reach out and teach her friends, many of whom are women of color, about gun safety. Because people talk, it spreads. Once you, once you dispel that myth of fright and fear, it goes away and you start bringing people to the other side. This is the evangelist part of the Second Amendment. As a Korean woman who grew up in the 1990s, Moon is also inspired by the legacy of the Los Angeles Uprising and the armed Korean immigrants who defended their businesses on rooftops when riots broke out in South Central. Quote, Back then, Korean Americans took a stand and took their safety into their own hands, she said. That is the second time that this exact same person has referenced taking your own accountability, your own safety into your own hands. In this case, she's referencing the rooftop Koreans that were defending their businesses in Los Angeles during a whole lot of political and cultural strife. Nothing went near their businesses because they defended themselves with the Second Amendment. She's now adopting the exact same thing. 
This is incredibly important to understand because while the left and the gun controllers and the Guardian over in Europe, they don't understand what's happening. Why are minorities picking up guns at unforeseen rates? Because they're embracing the American ideal. This is literally an example of the melting pot happening. But they can't say that because that would allude to the greatness of America. It's important you can't say that, especially when you're trying to undermine it. Anyway, let's keep going. During the pandemic, a host of Asian American affinity groups have emerged in Southern California to provide resources and a sense of community to new gun owners. Amazing. Phenomenal. Welcome in. Tom Wynn founded LA Progressive Shooters to provide firearms education to people of color after seeing a, quote, massive increase in first-time gun owners, particularly single women and queer people. We, now, that mirrors everything that we've covered on this channel. You had tremendous first-time gun buyers. You had it in the African-American community. You have it in the Asian-American community. You have it in the white community. You have it in the American community. It's incredibly important to understand this is not just a single segmented person, portion of the population. This is everyone. And everyone is picking it up. We've done studies for the past nine months on African-American gun clubs that felt the same way, but they need to protect themselves. Awesome. Get in here. If you feel more comfortable doing training with someone in a different scenario or different demographic or different whatever to make you feel comfortable, cool. The point is not who is training you. The point is not where you're buying the gun from. The point is you're embracing your American birthright. It's incredibly important. And, and honestly, from my perspective, when I see different groups creating outlets and outreach for comfort for every American... That's only going to further the Second Amendment because more and more people are getting into the fold. As I said, welcome in. Some gun rights activists, though, see the current surge as a dismantling of the historical barriers. <laughs> Here we go. Since Asians on the West Coast were not always allowed to practice their Second Amendment rights, in 1923, California passed a law denying non-citizens the right to possess concealable firearms. That ruled out Chinese immigrants, a majority of whom were barred from naturalizing by the Chinese Exclusion Act of 1882, which is trash, by the way. But the whole point, this goes back to alluding the fact that gun control has roots in racism across the country. You can go in the South, you can go in the West, you can go anywhere. The main point of the driving force of gun control history in this country is based on racial exclusion. You can even go back to what the Biden administration noted in one of their cases last week about the reason they had the ability to curtail gun rights because they prohibited uh, Native Americans from having firearms in the 17th century, also Catholics. Go back to the video. It's all there, and once we uncover it, we can make forward moves. But let's keep going. Cheng also said the media's coverage of the gun debate fixates on homicides, this is Chris Cheng, which comprises only one-third of firearm deaths and overlooks data on defensive gun use. A widely used but contested study cited by the CDC estimates that guns are used defensively between 60,000 to 2.5 million times in a year. Now that's also not even considering the fact that one-third are homicides, two-thirds are suicides of all gun death in this nation. But they aren't going to tell you that. It's starting to break through. I'm telling you, we can do this. We just got to keep going. And this last piece is the most powerful thing I could leave you with from this article. For some Asian Americans, the peace of mind that guns can bring outweighs their potential for harm. Yes, that's exactly the point. Fire is a dangerous tool, but a fearful master. George Washington. We all understand the power of firearms. We all understand what it can do. It's who is using it. It's who is yielding it. Who is controlling it. And if the benefits outweigh the cost and the potential danger, congratulations. Welcome to America, baby. You've got a Second Amendment, and I hope you enjoy the ride. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below, and I will see you tomorrow morning on The Bullet Points. I'm Braden. See you later.